back to 2 Thessalonians 2. That seems to be a good uh, place to look at. Um, if you listen to me a lot, you'll know I have uh, my go-to places in the Bible. Isaiah 14, Genesis 6, 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, Revelation 9. And I keep going back to a lot of these things because, um, you know, I don't know everything. But, you know, the way God has taken me seems to stem from certain places in the Bible. Everybody has their unique spiritual gift. And uh, one of mine is I got tired of being lied to. Nobody. Well, I won't say nobody. Normal people don't like to be lied to. We don't like to be lied to by salesmen. We don't like to be lied to by spouses, children. We don't like to be lied to by politicians. We get enough of that in this world. People don't like to be lied to by preachers. And there's enough of that going on in the world. I was, that's okay, I was lied to by a denomination. And so I said, I want to know what God says about prophecy, salvation, who God is, who Jesus is, what heaven is, what hell is. I want to know what God says about it instead of what man says about it. And if you'll do that, God will answer those questions. It may take a while. I mean, I asked that what I showed you this morning, I mean, it, it's taken years. It has taken years to understand this idea of can angels come into this realm and be killed? But now that I know the answer, I know the answer. Okay, because I know it from God and he's the one and the only one that I trust 100% of the time. He said, let God be true and every man a liar. Now what that means, is, now there's some good people out there who don't think they're lying and they don't want to lie. And I'm one of those. I don't want to lie to you and I don't want to mislead you. But I am not capable of everything that comes out of my mouth is 100% true. Only God can do that. So you take everything that I say and the verses that I give you, which is why I'd like for you to see them and read you. And I don't just say the Bible says something like this. I want to show you word for word what it says so that you can read the Bible on your own and make your own decision. But we are about to enter into this, an era of, of time where significant lies are going to be told. Uh, I'm going to go back to this UFO thing just for a few minutes and give you some examples. I watched a documentary about a man by the name of Billy Meyer. He's Swedish or German or something like that. And he had some interesting things happen to him. He says that he was been in contact with UFOs and aliens and, and he's, got, he's got the largest single collection of photographs and film of UFOs, pictures of UFOs, films of UFOs than any other person in the world and I'm going wow I'm, oh, I'm eating this up and I'm writing stuff down and I'm doing research you know and I'm listening to him and he starts talking about how he's in contact with these entities one of them's called Emmanuel was he in touch with Emmanuel or someone pretending to be Emmanuel and so I've got him in my notes. I'm going to make a video uh, on Billy Meyer. And then I came across a website. All these alleged photographs. Billy, uh, Billy Meyer said that he was actually inside of a UFO and they allowed him to take, to take his camera and he took some snapshots in there. He said he traveled through space and took a, a very close up view of the Horsehead Nebula. He took pictures of one of the moons of Jupiter. Comes to find out there's a guy that got Billy Meyer's pictures, bought them from him, and found those same pictures in a book. Billy Meyer took pictures of a picture in a book and said, this is my picture of the horse at Nebula. When me and the aliens went over here, he's a fraud. But let me show you some things he said. He was first introduced to an alien called Spoff. I don't know how do you pronounce that. 
When he was five, he would be taken up in a ship to different places in order to be taught occult knowledge. Part of this, I believe, he said the aliens that contacted Meyer claimed to be from the Pleiades, which is mentioned in the Bible, who wanted to make the world aware of the true teachings of creation. Now we're dealing with a lie. Even if these entities told Billy Meyer that, that is a lie. Because they're saying things that are contrary to Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Uh, so again, let God be true in every man and every E.T. a liar. Meyer claims contact from another alien named Emmanuel, whom he said the world believes is Jesus. He claims that he was really crucified but lived through it. Now, if that's true, if what he said was true, we have no salvation. We're lost. We're going to die and go to hell. So, uh, and revealed, so he gave him a scroll called the Talmud of Emmanuel, and it's got all kinds of junk in it and stuff like that. Uh, these are some of the photographs. Uh, Meyer went to a, an ashram in India where he was, quote, given the ability to photograph beam ships is what he called them. But he's a fraud. Even if some of, the, even if some of these pictures are of real extraterrestrial craft, when you lie to me five or six times, I just don't trust anything else you say. Okay? But the, the, when I got done with the documentary, me as a Bible believer, I watched this documentary that is all pro Billy Meyer. Oh, he's telling the truth, and this is amazing. It's from, like, UFO TV. Whoever runs that has got hundreds of UFO-related videos and about half of them are distinctly New Age teachings. Going, doing meditations, things like that. I'll tell you about another guy, Stephen Greer. The guy who ran, who runs the Disclosure Project. He is one of the front men in America of promoting um, full government disclosure they want everything that the United States government has ever collected on UFOs. Now, part of me says, absolutely, we need the truth. Our government doesn't need to be hiding stuff from us. Except, now, I agree with Luis Elizondo, who, runs, who used to run ATIP for the Defense Department. They were investigating UFOs. Elizondo said... I'm a patriot, I'm an American, I believe him, he served his country, I thank him for that. And he said, there, if I could figure out a way of telling 300 million Americans everything that I found out about UFOs and to make sure that that would never get into another government's hands, I would do it in a minute. But he said, I can't do that. So part, part of it, I'm going, yeah. Our government does need to keep certain things secret, especially about what we're capable of doing versus what they're capable of doing. I understand that. But Stephen Greer, along with these other guys, they want the government to release everything they've got on UFOs. So he brings out all these CIA, Department of Defense, military, Air Force, guys that worked at Naval, uh, uh, um, nuclear in inst installations, things like that and saying, you know, these things are real, we saw them, we have photographs, we have, we have film, we have pieces of wreckage, we have this, we have that, and the other. And so I didn't know who Stephen Greer was, but it doesn't take long to find out what kind of guy he is and who he is. This is his, his organization, the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Uh, that's Stephen Greer on the right. What's he doing? He's wiping ketchup off his fingers. He just got done eating french fries. No. He's making a phone call to E.T. He, I'm not, he's, he is. So there's Close Encounter of the First Kind, which is, I saw a UFO. Close Encounter of the Second Kind is, I took a picture of a UFO or a video of a UFO, or here's the landing site where there's radiation in the ground. Evidence. Close encounter of the third kind is I contacted or I came into contact, an alien came out of the ship, 
said hi to me, said take me to your leader, that's close encounters of the third kind. Close encounter of the fourth kind is I was abducted by a UFO. Greer has come up with a fifth kind. Human initiated contact. We, we didn't let ET call us, we called ET. So through meditation, visualization, all these new age Eastern mysticism practices, this then gives humans the ability to call alien entities. And a hundred years ago, they weren't called alien entities. They were called spirits, devils, gods, evil angels. That's what the Bible calls them. In other words, he'll get a hundred people out in the desert or along a beach somewhere or out in a field where the crop circles have shown up and they'll all sit down and begin to meditate and it's not Bible Med Bible meditation is you fill your mind with scripture and you think through you think on these things their version of meditation is don't think on anything empty your mind and create a void a vacuum an empty space you'll hear preachers say we need to create a space for God you don't need to create nothing for God God creates it for himself Amen. so don't believe these guys telling you this stuff it's nonsense it's from hell is what it is uh, Greer partners with a group called uh, ET let's talk let me show you them a little bit well here's what here's what Stephen Greer said he said the ET crafts are an extension of the ET consciousness and their life and they are actually living crystalline objects that are conscious. Now what did I say from the Bible yesterday that when the wheels showed up in Ezekiel chapter 1 the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. In other words what, what was in those particular spirits was also in, those, in that vehicle, in that chariot, in those wheels and wherever the cherubs wanted to go, the wheels and the chariot automatically responded to that. And I'm telling you, we are working on that exact technology so that instead of you getting into the car and saying, take me to Fargo, you get into the car and the car knows you want to go to Fargo. That's exactly what we're working on. And it, come, it's, it comes from, you know, what you see in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 1. So that's what Greer said. In the same interview, he, he talks about a UFO experience. He said, this object came in and he called it a celestial God consciousness. E.T. arrival. He said, what we've come to learn is this. We're standing at the precipice of a new age. There's power in the many but only when they're acting as one. Now I'm going to ask you a question. In fact, I'm, I'm not really looking for a response. I'm just going to teach you something. Does it take a lot of people to get God to move, to get God to do something? Does it take a lot of people? Elijah prayed one time, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. And he prayed one time, and it started to rain and the Bible says Elijah was a man of like passions as you and I so that is a deception when you hear the religious leaders say to you we need all of God's people in on this or God can't do anything that's a lie the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much it takes one why not it be you? So this idea that we need all of God's people to come together so we can accomplish great things. That's hooey. That's, that's the other side. Because they want us all in the same collective, in the same hut. Catholics and Lutherans and Baptists and Buddhists and Mormons all working together because after all, we all worship this. Did not Carl say the exact same thing an hour ago? All of us are part of all God's creation. Let's all get together because God wants us all together because he can't do anything unless all of us say, 
you know, for God to do this. And that is not true. So he says, he uses the word resonance. That's when resonance happens. We're joining together as responsible citizenry against the forces standing to divide us or joining consciousness to unite with, listen to what he said, to unite with the beings who are prepared to communicate with us. To unite with those beings. That's Daniel chapter 2. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's Genesis chapter 6. The sons of God came into the daughters of men. So they want unification, not only of everybody in the world, but everybody of the world and them. We must come together as one. Now, let me explain resonance. Who's my musicians here? Who plays piano or guitar or both? Okay, on a guitar, you hold your fingers lightly on the strings, pluck one, and the one an octave higher or a fifth higher will start to vibrate all on its own. That's because the waves from one string harmonically vibrate a fifth higher string or an octave string. You can do the same thing on a piano. You can hold the, the damper pedal down on a piano, which pulls the damper off all the strings, strike the middle C, and one octave up C string will start to vibrate all on its own without being touched. That's what resonance is. So let me explain resonance in, in the way the New Agers use it. Resonance means we send out our voice and they respond with theirs. Okay? It's called, in the Bible, it's called answering back. But it's the idea that when these aliens... And by the way, they're not descending down. They're falling down. Because God thrust them out of heaven. And you know when I think God's going to do that? When most everybody on earth asks for them to come down. And I assure you, that's going to happen. I changed my mind about, you know, people getting the mark of the beast because I thought, you know, they're going to have to drag people kicking and screaming to get a mark in their right hand or forehead. You know, the new world order is going to force this mark on everybody. And I don't believe that anymore. I believe what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13. It says the false prophet causes all, not forces all. Not demands all. He causes all. He creates the scenario so that man wants the mark of the beast. That's what's going to happen. So that's this resonance that he's talking about. Let me, um, by the way, Buddhist monks. Uh, there's an example of this. Have you ever seen the movie, um, the last, what is it? It's a Tom, uh, Tom Cruise movie, The Last Samurai. The, the chief samurai is in this Buddhist temple and he's meditating in there and these Buddhist monks have the ability with their voice box to make two tones or sometimes three at the exact same time. Now I'm a singer and I can't do that. But they can do that and what that symbolizes is a lower note and a higher note because that's how resonance works. A lower note is the people on the earth. The higher notes are the gods. And the idea is when we give our voice, they respond back and come down to us. Let me show you a video. Um, I mentioned that when Stephen Greer, he'll pull out 50, 100 people, he'll take them out in the middle of the desert, take them out to a mountainside in Colorado, He'll take them out to a beach somewhere or take them, whatever, he leads these expeditions and they all get out there and they sit in the cold or sometimes the heat, usually at night, and they'll meditate. Greer says he has over 200 examples of what you're about to see on the screen. Is that when they meditate, all of a sudden, E.T. will show up. You see that? bright sun-like object in the background that is not the sunset it's not the sunrise it's not the sun because if it is 
the son has a twin brother because a second ET is about to show up in this video. That's Greer's laser pointing the direction. You don't have to tell me where it is, I see it. You see, what's happened is Greer has led this team to start meditating out there at that beach and all of a sudden these UFOs show up. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? There, are, there it is. There's the second one. And every time I watch this, I'm hearing, do, 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 do. Right? Think about that movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The idea was that when the people there on the side of Devil's Tower, that's a whole story in itself, side of Devil's Tower, when they start playing the music, then the aliens respond back with their music. And the whole idea is that they're learning to talk to one another through music, through sounds. All right? So we'll move on from that. But basically, and like I say, you go to Greer's website or go to his YouTube channel and you'll see examples of when these people meditate, these ETs show up. That tells you something right there. All right. Uh, let me move past this. One of the partners that partners with Stephen Greer is a man by the name of Costas Macrius. He's an Indian. And he says, he has a quote on his website, and he says, the mass power of goodwill, the dynamic effect of intelligent and active understanding, and the potency of a trained and alive public opinion, which desires the greatest good of the greatest number, are beyond belief. This dynamic power has never been employed. It can today save the world. So what do we need Jesus for? When the combined power of mankind can save the world. Oh, by the way, he quotes this from what he calls his favorite teacher, Master Jual Cool. Does anybody know who that, who, who that is? Jual Cool? Jual Cool is who Alice Bailey, Alice Bailey was in contact with, and probably Helena Blavatsky. According to Theosophical Writings, Joel Kuhl is said to work on furthering the spiritual evolution of our planet through the teachings offered in the 24 books by Elise Bailey of Esoteric Teachings, published by the Lucis Trust. What was the previous name of the Lucis Trust? Does anybody know? The Lucifer Publishing Company. Dun, dun, dun. I need that, need that sound effect. Joel Kuhl is not a person. He's a spirit, a familiar spirit. He is said to have telepathically transmitted the teachings to Bailey and is thus regarded by her followers as the communications director of the masters of the ancient wisdom. The Bible term for that is familiar spirit. Uh, let's move on from here. Here's another video I watched. This is offered at the, um, what was it called? The uh, ET Let's Talk. CE5 team. CE5 is Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, Human Initiated Contact. So, so I got this video, ET Contact, they are here, because I thought it was about UFOs. Well, it was kind of about UFOs, but it was more about UFOs will teach us how to do telepathy. That is me speaking to you without talking. My wife can do that with me. I bet. All I have to do is look in her direction and going, okay, I get it. Hey? Okay. Uh, telekinesis, moving things with your mind. We're on the verge of that through technology. We're on the verge. We're working on it. At, remember what I said? What was magic 100 years ago is technology. Okay? And, that's, and she is loading the UFO people up with all this new age nonsense. I say it's nonsense, but it's real. It says this is devils going to work for mankind, doing what mankind can't do himself. So she goes through about an hour and a half of all this new age stuff. And at the end, here's what she says. It is no longer about gods among us, but that you may be a god among the gods. Da, da, da. Where did she get that idea from? The serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Immortality, 
For God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Stephen Greer, I, the video that I just showed you, he's talking about how you must be awakened. Excuse me. God's people already are. Turn to 1 Thessalonians 5. If you're there in 2 Thessalonians, it's just a page back. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Whitley Strieber, in a video that I saw of him giving a, a talk, he said that what's happening now is very similar to a birth. There is going to be a birth, and we are in the times of the birth pangs right now. And Whitley Strieber is one of these others that is all about the aliens doing whatever they want to do with us. And, but Paul said, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Somebody say amen. amen. But to the same salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So the new age version, get this. You've heard of the pineal gland, right? You've got one, you've got one, you've got one. All God's children got one. It actually is a third eye. It really is. Because what it does, it receives information from your eyes. You know, God made your eyelids real thin. You ever notice that? You close your eyes during, I close my eyes now and I can tell there's a bright light in this room. And what happens is, your pineal gland receives the light input from your eyes while you're asleep. Because your eyelids are thin. The sun's up. It's time to wake up. So when the pineal gland perceives that the light's up outside, it stops making melatonin. Melatonin is what puts you to sleep. So at night, when your third eye, your pineal gland, perceives that it's dark outside, it starts producing melatonin, which makes you... So... When you hear these new agers talk about third eye activation, pineal gland, we need to activate our pineal glands because that will awaken us. But what does it actually do? It's just the opposite, isn't it? You see, they call light darkness. And they call darkness light. Which means they also call what's good evil and what's evil so they call these ETs, these gods, good. But God calls them, the exact phrase in the Bible is evil angels. Now, we've read about the strong for this. I had you turn to 2 Thessalonians 2, but I didn't read it. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. All deceivableness. There is going to come a day when God is going to unleash the floodgates of everything that is a lie and tells a lie. He's not going to hold it back. He's going to let it go. And in that day, billions of people around the world are going to believe in Jesus. But it's the wrong Jesus. It's the counterfeit, the fake one, not the real one. In verse 11, well, verse 10 is because they received not the love of the truth. You know what the truth is? The Bible. The Bible, in fact, I, I'm going to be, uh, I love you people. And I've been coming up here for several years. But I'm going to be a little bit mean for a minute. And I'm going to make you testify about whose side you're really on. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, and I'm going to say this according to the word of God. In fact, I'm going to quote scripture. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of our earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word 
shall not pass away. Thy word is truth. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Is that enough Bible verses for you? So, what I believe is that at this very day, in this present hour, right here in this room, I have the absolute, infallible, inerrant, inspired word of God and I'm holding it in my hand Amen. if you believe that would you stand Wow now some are sitting thank you very much you may be seated seated I respect your disagreement, but obviously I don't agree, and neither does the Bible. So my words to you is encouragement, not judgment, because there was a time while I was in the ministry that I didn't believe what I just told you. Oh, I believe the Bible was inspired you know, 2,000 years ago. But it's got errors in it now. I used to believe that until God changed my heart. And it has to be from the heart that you believe it. Because if you believe something in your head, if I tell you something and you believe it, somebody could come by five minutes from now and take it back out of your head and you'll say, okay, Hoggard was making that stuff up. Right? But if it's in your heart, it never goes away. So, for this, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, because that's how it is. Salvation is always linked with the truth. If you don't believe the truth, you're not going to heaven. And if you don't trust anything in this world to be true, I feel sorry for you. What? You think God gave the words his most precious thing? The thing do you know that the Bible is actually of a higher idea in God's mind than even his name? Thy word hast thou magnified above all thy name. And so, what do you think God gave his most precious gift to man, which is his word. And then he took his hands off and said, what they do with it is their business. And it all fell into corruption. Because what do men do when they get something really precious? They destroy it. They corrupt it. What it have you had these pies over here at this village inn over here? Yes. They're amazing, aren't they? You know what we do with something amazing like coconut cream pie? We turn it into crap. That's what man does with what God gives him. So God did not leave it up to men to preserve his word. He preserved his word. It's what I believe. For this cause, God shall send them then strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Why? Because they didn't want the truth to begin with. Oh, you've got truthers out there on the internet. I'm a truther. In fact, I've been convinced that somebody went in a time machine and went back and changed the name of the Berenstain Bears. Have you heard that one? Mandela Effect. Somebody went back and, and made it so that Nelson Mandela didn't die in prison. And we know he did die in prison. No, he didn't. Oh, that's how I remember it. Well, then you're wrong. No, somebody went back in time and changed it. They believe that. Why? Why? NASA has spent 
4,600 billion dollars trying to convince everybody that the earth is round and we know it's flat. Why do they believe that? They love not the truth. Isaiah 66, for all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions. So guess who is in charge of people believing lies? God is. Because God can either open his book to you or he can close it to you. God can either say, let there be light, or God cannot say anything at all and you'll be in darkness the rest of your life. And it all has to do with what do you really want? I will choose their delusions and I will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 13, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of what? The truth. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be as serious as death because I'm going to preach on being born again. And I'm going to tell you what it is and I'm going to tell you what it's not. And some of you is going to be mad. It depends on whether or not you really love the truth or not. I've said this for years. I think it's possible that somebody here, you could be on top of all the conspiracy theories. You could be anti-New World Order. You can be against the Mark of the Beast. You could be against the RFID chip. You can be against the New World Order. You can be a bit against the secret societies. You can expose unrighteousness and wickedness throughout the entire world and know and believe all the secrets that evil men are trying to keep secret and you will go get a mark in your right hand or your forehead. Do you think you're smarter than God? Do you think that God doesn't know how to fool you? Because you really don't love the truth. So now there's conspiracy theories about how this Bible was translated. Oh, the Masons, did you know that Francis Bacon got involved in translating the King James Bible and he put Masonic secrets in it and King James was a queer and all these, that King James Bible is from the Illuminati. See, I've heard all this stuff. At one time, I believed it. And people make this stuff up because they want them to be their only truth, not God's word. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Hang on to this book. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. The word establish. You ever stab something? When you stab something, the S-T-A in that word, like stab, stand, start, stage, Station, statue, it's a Latin prefix. And what it means is it's not going anywhere. It's moving. It's not moving. So for God to establish you in every good work, what God has done is he, he has... See, the reason why... There's two reasons why you would have stood a while ago. A, you really believe it. Or B, you don't want anybody to know that you don't believe it. And only God knows the difference, you and God. Only God and you know that. Because it's highly possible that somebody stood that doesn't really believe it, but they don't want everybody else to know they don't believe it. So that's why I appreciated the ones who stayed in their seat, because at least you're being honest. Thank you for that. 
But for God, to, for those of you who stood because that's what's in your heart, you stood because God established that in you and it ain't going nowhere. What did Jesus say? If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Very elect has nothing to do with levels of election. Well, I believe the, I believe the, the bad Christians are going to have to go through stuff. Excuse me, there is no such thing as a bad Christian. Christians are sanctified and righteous by the righteousness that has been put on them of Christ. And you either believe or you don't. But there's not levels of it. There's not a level of yes and no. There's not a variation between true and false, is there? Try that on your next exam in school. True or false? Did the War of 1812 take place in 1813? It's false. Right? Well, now, even though it officially ended in 1812, there was still some... There's no, no, it's either yes or no. Amen? I gotta move on. Here's how men are deceived. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, What? I am Christ and shall deceive many. So it comes out from people. Then many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. So we know there are deceitful workers and people lie. So that's part of how men are deceived. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Are there evil communications in this world? Are there movies that you shouldn't watch? How do you know? You watched them, didn't you? Is there music you shouldn't listen to? Are there people in, sitting in news broadcaster desks that are lying through their teeth? And does that change the opinions of Americans all over, all over the country? Are there books written in bookstores that people read that are full of garbage? Are there books written in Christian bookstores that are lying through their teeth? Evil communications corrupt good manners. So this is how people are deceived. So before YouTube, you could put into this room the number of people in the world that believed the earth was flat. Now they're having room-sized conferences all over the world. Romans 3, they're all gone out of the way. They're together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Ephesians 4, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. That used to be you. That used to be me. By the slight of men. You know what slight of men is? It's making a coin disappear out of this hand, and you think, oh, he made a coin disappear. No, it was in this hand, but you didn't see it. Uh, the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children in disobedience. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. This is why I'm telling you, if you don't believe the Bible, then please explain to me where you found better truth. Because it doesn't exist. Which Bible would say the Son of God and which one would say a son of the gods? In Daniel 3.25. Which Bible would call him Lucifer, Satan, and which one would call him the morning star? In Isaiah 14.12. Go do your own research. Is there not another Jesus that we have to be warned about? You know what the Antichrist does? He exalts himself above all that is called God. Do you know what is called God in this room? This book. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was... Oh, you don't believe the New World Translation where it says the Word was a God? You don't believe that, do you? 
But you see how just changing a letter in a verse changes the whole doctrine of who Jesus is. Vanity and pride will deceive you. They, they, let, him, let not him that is deceived trust in vanity. He mentions in verse 34, I'm kind of moving fast, but tabernacles of bribery. Bribes will change politicians' mind. They conceive mischiefs, bring forth vanity, and their belly prepareth deceit. Your flesh, your body, your emotions will lie to you. How many of you know that? People out there all over the Facebook and the Internet, oh, I trust my feelings. My feelings, oh, I, I get feelings, I get good feelings when I'm around you, and I trust that. That's, I don't trust my feelings. If I did, I'd be out of the ministry, out of my marriage, out of my home, probably out of the country. I don't trust my feelings. I trust God. And I love it when people say, oh, I just feel like God wants us to be this way. I don't feel God anything. I read God and what he said. You don't have to trust somebody's feelings. You can read the word. The pride of thine heart that deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Hebrews, sin deceives you. Doesn't it? No, your sin deceives you. So, sodomites now get behind pulpits in churches. God made me this way. And I'm glad that we have found acceptance now in the house of God. Their sin deceived them. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Matthew 13, 13, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Your own sin, your own sin is probably why you don't believe what God said. Or it may just be pride. Man's own heart. Here, here's how we're going to get into it. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And you hear people all the time saying, follow your own heart. You hear preachers, follow your own heart. That's good, isn't it? Follow your own heart. I don't trust my heart. It's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, is it, pos is it really possible to believe your own lies? Of course it is. Any man in here who has ever killed a buck, raise your hand. Did the buck not get bigger? <laughs> and the fish longer. And how you wrestled him to the ground. And then let him go again. Yeah. No, the alien took it. Our own heart, we can believe our own lies. We can, take, we can tell something to somebody and, be, and tell it so many times that it then in our mind becomes our own version of what really happened. This is why in courtrooms now, they're very glad to get a hold of things like DNA evidence and video evidence and audio evidence and GPS evidence and text messages and Facebook posts because that is tangible evidence but eyewitness accounts, people lie and think they're telling the truth. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Um, I want you to turn to Ezekiel 14 because Tim Rubis just peeked around the corner back there. And I want to honor the conference and their schedule. So I don't want to... Uh, 
drag something out, but I also don't want to cut short what it is that I really need to say here. I mentioned to you earlier, I have a friend. I still love him. I would take a bullet for this man. I would, I would do anything in the world for this guy. But I found out from somebody else, and he's an intelligent man, used to work for a pretty good sized company, had a good job, Bible believer, left a church because they were drifting off into serious errors. And so he pulled his family out and he said, I'm not going to sit there in a church and have that guy lie to my wife and kids. And I honored, I loved him for that. Then I found out he believes the earth is flat. And I asked God, God, how did that happen? How does it happen that you can look at actual, real photographs of the curvature of the earth and say, I don't believe that? Not photoshopped, actual photographs of the earth being globe and believe that you're seeing something that's not true. So I wanted to know how it is that men get deceived and why. And I said earlier that some of the smartest people in the world, some of the smartest scientists in the world are Jesuit priests. How is it that they can detect a star moving over a foot and know that there's a planet circling around it and yet they think that that statue of Mary actually listens to their prayers? How does that happen? Many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. The NIV in that same verse says, every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Is there a difference? What's the difference? In the flesh. So I'm going to ask you a question. Which Bible is telling the truth here? Is it the NIV? So you've got a Bible that lied to you. That ought to make you mad. Signs and wonders. People, there's, there are going to be signs and wonders. The false prophet, Revelation 13, by means of those miracles which he had power to do. See, it's the miracles that he does that I think gets everybody to go get a mark in their right hand or forehead. Okay? And I, I'm, I've, I've got all of this on DVD, so I'm going to kind of move up a little bit. Uh, wine and strong drink is the deceiver. Beer. Whiskey. Vodka. Vermouth. What brand? No, I'll just say. <laughs> Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. That's what your God said to you. So quit drinking. Babylon has a cup in her hand. Right? Babylon has a cup in her hand, and she pours it out and makes the nations drunk so that they believe lies. There was a man up in St. Louis who was a businessman. He was visiting St. Louis and doing business in St. Louis, and he was staying at a downtown hotel. So he's at the bar until late, 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 getting drunk, comes staggering back to his hotel room. The, he re, finds out that he didn't shut the hotel room door all the way, so he pushes it open and crawls in bed and pulls his clothes off, and there's a teenage girl laying in his bed. So he raped her but it wasn't his room. Did you know that they let him off for that? And the family sued him, and they lost. That's what, that's what being drunk will do to you. He thought he was in his room, and he's going, cool, there's a woman in my bed. But it was a 13-year-old girl. 
Then there are people who say, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. They want to be lied to. God said, they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Where, the deceit from where? Their heart. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging. Revelation 17, Ezekiel 14. Let's look at it. Verse 1. Then came certain of, the, certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their where? Ah. So if you come in our church down at Festus and you see a statue of Mary there, you say, I ain't coming to this church. They pray before statues. I'm out of here. And you'd be justified in doing it. But then you go to a church and you don't see statues out in the auditorium anywhere. But what you don't know is that that priest or that minister has an idol in his heart he's hiding from everybody. You know what that is? He's carved out, what does God look like? Does anybody know? You don't know because you've never seen his face. It would kill you, right? So how can somebody carve out an idol of God? They can't, but they do it all the time. They carve out an image of God that comes from their own imagination. They mold God how they want God to be. Oh, God doesn't have a problem with me drinking every now and then. God doesn't have a problem with me stepping out of my wife. God doesn't have a problem with me not paying my tithes or stealing stuff from work. God, God doesn't have a problem with me doing that. God made me a sodomite. So I'm going to be a sodomite for Jesus. They've carved out a God that does not match this book. And they hid it in their heart. So nobody could see it was there. But God knows it's there, doesn't he? So he says, Son of man, they set up idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired at all by them? In other words, God, they said, they come to uh, Ezekiel and say, tell us what God said. And God's going, they have idols in their heart, Ezekiel. They have stumbling block for their, they have got so much sin in their heart. Should I really, should I answer what they say? Should I do what they are asking? So look what he says. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. And look, so look at verse 9. That's what I have on the screen. And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Well, wait, wait a minute. Does God lie? No. He doesn't need to. God has people working for him that will do all the lying that needs to be done. So here's, here's what God is saying. You see, what you believe is not really based upon the operations of your mind. It's always based upon what's in your heart. You see, Romans 10 says... That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So, can somebody just say, I believe in Jesus, he's my savior, I want to go to heaven when I die, forgive me of all my sins. Can I go now? Can they say that and not believe it and still go to heaven? Can you go to a church and have a religious ritual performed on you and you go to heaven? Can you be voted in to church membership and approved by the clergy board and go to heaven? You have to believe what God said. And it's belief not in the mind, but the heart. So here's the key. 
Now I'm going to give you an example of this. 1 Kings 22, and I promise I'll be done. 1 Kings 22. Ahab and Jezebel, Bill and Hillary. By the way, I have the WikiLeaks emails from John Podesta, who is in contact with Tom DeLong, you know, the rock star to the Stars Academy. Before the election, they were chatting back and forth about the possibility that if Hillary got elected, she would force government disclosure of alien encounters in America. Their hopes... See, John Podesta is a big UFO fan. And he was running Hillary's campaign. And I had the emails through WikiLeaks. They were saying, if we get her in office, because Bill, both Bill and Hillary was on these nightly talk shows before the election, and they had written out the script of what the guys were supposed to ask them, and it was always about ETs and UFOs. And both Bill and Hillary said, if we get to be, we get to be president, if we get to be president, we're going to make sure the government releases all the files on UFOs. And she thought that would get her elected. I have the emails. Now, the heart. So God says... And use you for example. Okay? God is the one who knows you better than anybody. He knows you better than your mama did, your wife does, knows you better than me, knows you better than anybody because he sees everything goes on in your heart. It's scary, isn't it? But he also knows that you do love him with all your... He knows that. So when the deceptions fall... He's going to grab a hold of you and say, no, don't go over there. That's a lie. Don't do it. It's a trap. Okay? Because he knows you. So God knows everybody's heart here. And there's a reason why you believe what you believe, whether it's to the good or to the bad. So here is Ahab and Jezebel, and they stole Naboth's vineyard. Stole it and killed him. And God sent Elijah to Ahab and said, you know that place that, that Naboth hung in front of everybody where you killed him? The same place the dogs are going to lick your blood up. So, here's 1 Kings 22 and Ahab wants to go to battle the next day. God is, has appointed that Ahab goes to this battle. Ahab has got to be in this battle because God's going to kill him there in the same spot that the dogs licked the blood up of Nabal. And so, Ahab, Jehoi, he wants Jehoshaphat to get in on it. Jehoshaphat, come in with me. We'll, to get, we need to be together as one so we can defeat the enemy. So Jehoshaphat says, uh, I don't know about this. I would really like to hear from God. Ahab said, I got that covered. I've got 400 preachers. They're all from all different denominations because we all worship the same God. And so he says to the 400 prophets, tell me what's going to happen tomorrow. See into the future. Inquire of God. And one guy makes these iron horns. And I can see him sticking them on his head like this. He said, see these horns they have? Tomorrow you're going to use these horns and you're going to go against the enemy. And you're going to prevail. Because God loves you. So... Ahab says, see, it's the truth. All these preachers are in agreement. Don't fall for that. And I've been told by people, oh, come on, pastor, you know, everybody believes that the sons of God were the generation of Seth. I don't care what everybody believes. I only care what God said. I'm not going to be judged by everybody. But I've got to stand before God one of these days. And to be honest with you, I'm not looking forward to it. It's scary what I'm going to have to face when I go stand before God. So Jehoshaphat's going, do you not have anybody else? Because I'm still not buying it. So he says, well, I got Micaiah, but I don't like him. Well, how come you don't like him? He don't tell me what I want to hear. And isn't that like 
most people in these churches, in this community, Tim Rubis. They go there because they hear what they want to hear. So, Micaiah comes along. Micaiah, what did you see? Look at your Bible, look up on the screen. Verse 19, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? One said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Do you know what Ahab did upon hearing how that deception came about Upon hearing how a spirit got in the mouth of 400 men and they all said the same lie to Ahab. Do you know what Ahab did with that? He said, see, I told you, he never tells me what I want to hear. And Ahab got slaughtered the next day. Even when he was told the truth, he can't handle the truth. And his blood was spilled all in his chariot. And there was a man who came and started washing the blood out of that chariot. And here come the dogs licking up that blood. Exactly the way God said. Now I'm going to ask you today, take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. I'm going to ask you, I feel like I'm preaching tomorrow's message already, Tim. But I'm going to ask you, what do you believe? You believe all the stuff you see on YouTube? All the blogs, all the Facebook memes? You know, people are led astray by stupid Facebook memes. Something they look at for five seconds, and they like, oh, I like that. Oh, that's good. And they believe it. And who knows if it's a true or not? They don't. So, if this book, this Bible, is not 100% without any single error, either error in transmission of text, either error in transcribing from one copy to another, or error in translating, I believe it was translated right and correct. Does not God speak English? Does not God, did not God speak the languages that people understood in the day of Pentecost? I believe this book and only this book. What do you believe? My prayer, I'm here for you. I'm your servant. And my heart is on your side, believe it or not, because... 20 years ago, you would, you would not have, well, I'd say 25 years ago, you would not have liked me. I promise you. You would have hated my guts. But God turned me around. God changed me. God made me better. God made me believe what he said. And I made up my mind. It's the Bible or nothing. Nothing. Because I have nowhere else to go. I'm like Peter. To whom shall we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. Father in heaven, I come before you today and looking in the eyes of these people. And I care about them. I care about how they turn out. I care about their life and their families, their children, their grandchildren. I care about, Lord, what they've been listening to who they've been listening to. Father, I've been lied to, and I've lied. God, have mercy on me for lying to people. God, I hate it that I did that. 
And I asked you years ago, don't let me lie to people when I'm preaching. I don't want to do that. But God, I know that in all this time I've been preaching, I have said things that were not true. And I, I didn't mean to, but I did. I know I did. And I'm sorry. And Father, I pray, God, every day that although you have a right to turn me over to a reprobate mind, you don't have to. And I pray, God, that you wouldn't. Not now, not ever. Father, I pray for these people. I love them. And I know, Father, the pride that gets in my heart, in our hearts, when we think we know something and we're convinced of it. Nobody can change my mind. And, but God, you change mine. Because you spoke to me. You said, let there be light. There's light. So Father, my words have no power in them whatsoever. But your word does. Father, I pray that you would change somebody's mind today whether they're here or watching online. God, that you would change somebody's heart today so that they're not deceived. Remove the stumbling block of their sins out of their lives so that they will know the truth and the truth will make them free. Bless your word, I pray. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said, Amen.